this meeting, uh, Queen Anne's County Board of Education for June the 2nd, 2021. Call this meeting to order. Uh, do I have a motion to... Yes, pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the board to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. We'll be back at 6 o'clock to our regular board meeting. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to the Board of Education, Queen Anne's County, June the 2nd, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody's had a chance to look at the agenda. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. I've had a chance to look at the uh, minutes, both May 26th for open and close. Everybody had a chance to look at those? May I make a motion, sir, to approve the minutes for May 26, 2021, open and closed? Second. A motion is second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Kane, we have recognitions. We do some special recognitions tonight. Is down there. <laughs> Good evening. So we have some very, very special recognitions this evening. And we are going to start by recognizing our Teacher of the Year and our Employees of the Year, along with the sponsors of last year's uh, Teacher of the Year celebration. So we'll start with our 2021 uh, Toy Teacher of the Year Platinum sponsors. Okay. All right, very good. I guess I'm in charge of that part. So tonight we'll recognize our platinum sponsors that helped to make our 2021 Teacher of the Year and Employee of the Year Annual Award Celebration a success. Our outstanding sponsors have a major role in making sure this event can occur and we want to express our appreciation to each of them. All of the awards that are presented during the celebration were donated by our amazing community partners as well as the fabulous prizes for each honoree. Logos and websites of all of our sponsors are posted on the Queen Anne's County Public Schools website to further acknowledge them for their support. I have the pleasure of having a few of the platinum sponsors with me tonight, and I would like you to come up, come forward, if you will. We do have some recognitions for you. I believe we may need, um, okay, very good, you have that, Ms. Bass. So we have Ms. Amy Bateman from Data Networks. Ms. Bateman, thank you so much. Ms. Bass is going to recognize you. Thank you so much. And if you step right here, we'll, we'll take a picture. I guess I should shake hands. Huh? Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank, you. You, Thank so you. Thank you. We have George Greenway from Hertridge Ford of Easton. Not here. And then we have Doug Eater, I hope I'm saying that correctly, from Oak Contracting, LLC. Thank you so much. If you'll step right here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mick Rayburn from Whiting Turner. Oh, 
Thank you so much. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Likewise. I'd like to recognize some other platinum sponsors that unfortunately could not make it here tonight. AIG Retirement Services, DD McCracken Home Team, Kent Island American Legion Post 278, The Marksman Company, Oak Contracting, Power School, Preston Automotive Group, Queen Anne's County Commissioners, and Soitman Family Dentistry. Thank you again to our sponsors for your continued support and for making this such a special year for our award winners. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now for our 2019-2020 Employees of the Year and Teacher of the Year winners, because we were not able to recognize them in person last year, it is our distinct pleasure and our honor to recognize them tonight. So tonight we're having our long overdue recognition of some of our talented, hardworking, dedicated Queen Anne's County Public Schools employees. We'll be able to recognize them for their 2019-2020 um, Employee of the Year and Teachers of the Year. And this evening, we'll take that opportunity to do that. So we want to thank them for their service, for focusing on the success of our students. And we are so fortunate to have so many outstanding people in our school system. Their sacrifice, their dedication, and love of the profession, whether it is as a teacher, a custodian, a specialist, all of them have a lasting impact on our students. So before we start, once again, we'll take an opportunity to thank our sponsors, and many of them have been faithful sponsors for years. We are incredibly grateful for their continued support. It's amazing how community members just step forward to support their own. And these generous donations cannot go overlooked. So for everything that they have done in the past and continue to do, we thank our sponsors. Now, let us go ahead and celebrate our winners and our finalists. We will start with our bus driver of the year, and that is Miss Marty Dawkins. Right forward, right here, Ms. Dawkins. Ms. Dawkins started as a substitute bus driver and was then hired to be a driver trainer evaluator. Bus driving runs in the family. Her mother, her father, her sister, all were bus drivers. And we've got a beautiful picture of you right behind you, Ms. Dawkins. There, too. <laughs> Her husband Michael purchased his first bus 35 years ago, and daughter Jenna drives in Delaware. In your spare time, you spend time painting nature and water landscapes. She's plenty of inspiration to do this here on the Eastern Shore, and she is humbled with this honor and will always say, my kids are, are the, the best. best. Yeah, there you are. go. Congratulations. <laughs> We are just recognizing you. We would like to get a picture with you. Oh my goodness. With the mask, without. Oh. Your, your call. Okay. Step right here. Your call. Your call. Oh, okay. Your call. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Congratulations. I do have the best kids ever. Yes. Yes. I mean, you do. we teach them manners. These bus drivers are awesome. They really are. We agree. And so are you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Oh, yeah. Our next award is for Outstanding Operations Employee of the Year. And that award goes to Mr. Kevin Hollis. Mr. Kevin Hollis, please step forward. Right here is perfectly fine. A graduate of Queen Anne's County High School, Mr. Hollis has worked his entire 25 plus 
year career at Centerville Middle School. Last year, with the custodial staff down to two employees, Mr. Hollis stepped up to cover shifts to ensure that the building was ready for students and staff. He greets everyone with a smile, and we can see it behind that um, gator, and a laugh. He is an amazing team player who's willing to help everyone. He enjoys working with such a great group of people, the CMS staff. Thank you, Mr. Hollis, for all that you do, and congratulations to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we celebrate our Sodexo employee of 2019-20, Miss Betty Higgs, who is not able to be with us tonight. Miss Higgs has over 30 years of experience working in the food service industry. Her work with Sodexo started at Queen Anne's County High School in 1990 and Queen Anne's County, and, and I'm sorry, and um, Centerville Middle School she also has and is currently stationed at Kennard Elementary School. She looks forward to greeting and serving the students and staff there every single day. She enjoys her summers off so that she can relax and prepare for the next school year. And it is my pleasure to congratulate Miss Betty Higgs, Sodexo Employee of the Year. Next, we congratulate Miss Lori Milner from Graysonville Elementary School. She was the 2019-2020 Outstanding Secretary of the Year. Great, I'm glad you have your crew with you. Mrs. Milner started out at Queen Anne's County Public Schools as a substitute teacher and has been a secretary at Graysonville Elementary for over five years. She started the school system to make a difference in the lives of our community's youth. She also works after school for partnering for youth. She thinks the students have made a positive impact on her life as well. She thanks her family, Rob, Sydney, Celeste, and Reese, along with her school family, for this honor. And we have all of them with you, along with your principal, Mrs. Camp. Congratulations, Thank Mrs. So Milner. Much. Congratulations. Well done. Next, we'll celebrate the Outstanding Paraeducator of the Year, Ms. Claire Kelly. Right here, Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly has been a paraeducator in Queen Anne's County for over 22 years. She's lived her entire life on Ken Island and has worked at Ken Island Elementary and now Mattapique Elementary School. She's thankful for the professionalism, the kindness, the support, and team spirit she receives from everyone she currently works with and the many friends she's made over the years. In her spare time, she's, she enjoys cooking, reading, day tripping, but most of all, being close to her family and her friends. Congratulations, Ms. Kelly. Well done. Coming over, we'll take a photo. Thank you so much. Next, our 2019-20 recipient of the Outstanding New Teacher Award goes to Ms. Shawnee Hopeman of Mattapique Elementary School. 
right there. Ms. Holtman is homegrown. She graduated from Ken Island High School. She's student taught at Ken Island High, at, no, you student taught at Kennard Elementary School. After graduating from Salisbury University, she was offered a fourth grade position at Mattapique Elementary. She is thankful for the support from her parents who are with her today, um, her colleagues, and all who have played a, a role in her journey. Let's congratulate Ms. Holtman. New teacher. We'll take a photo. <laughs> Give <my name>. Or small. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. And next, we will congratulate Ms. Jennifer Osborne, Education Specialist of the Year. Ms. Osborne is a reading specialist at Mattapique Elementary School. Ms. Osborne began teaching at Mattapique Middle School where she taught both sixth and eighth grade language arts while earning her Master of Education in Reading as well as her Reading Specialist Certification from Salisbury University. She then went to Mattapique Elementary as a Reading Specialist. She is a perpetual student pursuing a doctorate, yay, yay, in education, <laughs> and, and she really enjoys learning, especially from her friends, staff, and the students at Mattapique Elementary. Ms. Osborne strives to pass along a love of reading to her students every day, and we congratulate you, Ms. Osborne. Thank well you. done. We've got your principal here with you. Is this your family? Yeah. Come on over. Wonderful. Okay, next we will welcome our 2019-20 Outstanding Coach of the Year, and that is Mrs. Marlene Stanton. Ms. Stanton, come on in. And family, step right up. Great. Mrs. Stanton has been teaching with Queen Anne's County Public Schools for over 15 years. The majority of the time she's taught elementary and secondary physical education, but most recently also health education at Queen Anne's County High School. She has a passion for coaching and has coached multiple high school sports, including soccer, swimming, and lacrosse. She resides in Churchill with her husband, Sam, three, and her three boys, Giles, am I saying that Giles. correctly? Giles, mm -hmm. Henry, and Graham. Congratulations, Thank Coach Stanley. Thank you. Let's get a picture. Oh. Oh. Thank you so much. Excellent. Next, the 2019-20 Outstanding Support Employee Award goes to our very own Mrs. Renee Wolf. Come on in, Mrs. Wolf. Mrs. Wolf is an accountability specialist here at, here at the central office. Come right on over. Ms. Wolf is an Eastern Shore native. She started working in Queen Anne's County Public Schools in 2008, first as an administrative secretary at Centerville Middle School, and then moving to her current role in 2014. She attributes her success to the many great people she has learned from and worked with over the years. If I can turn this page, I'll tell you more. She loves her job and being able to provide support to the schools. <clears throat> Ms. Wolf and her husband Joey live in Centerville with their two children, Luke and Leah. She's an active volunteer as well. So let's hear it for Mrs. Wolf. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yep, we'll do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mrs. Now I'd like to introduce to you Miss Amanda Bramble, the 2019-20 Outstanding Student Services Employee. Right Miss Bramble, oh yep, come right forward, absolutely. Yes, I love it. Fun. Hello, Mrs. Bramble. <clears throat> Miss Bramble received a bachelor's degree in psychology with a minor in educational studies, a master's in psychology, and a certificate of advanced study in school psychology. And you're going to get that dissertation written, right? <laughs> Another Eastern Shore native, Miss Bramble serves as the school psychologist at three schools, Graysonville, Kennard, and Mattapique Elementary. She feels privileged to work every day with the remarkable educators in this county. She also played and coached field hockey at the collegiate level and continues to coach in various capacities locally. Congratulations to you, Ms. Bramble. Okay, our our next star is the outstanding community volunteer of the year who was not able to be with us tonight, but we congratulate Miss Yolanda Hughes. Miss Hughes was born in Queen Anne's County. She attended Queen Anne's County Public Schools through grade 11 and was homeschooled, but she graduated from Queen Anne's County. She has always been helpful to her family and her friends. Once her niece started school, she began to volunteer, finding her purpose, assisting children and helping them to grow. She contributed also to her own self-growth. She's grateful for the opportunity and is honored to be appreciated. Congratulations, Ms. Hughes. And now, the 2019-20 Outstanding Leadership Award, right here, goes to Mrs. Teresa Farnell, principal of Centerville Elementary School. Mrs. Farnell spent the first part of her educational career in Talbot County, teaching at the elementary level before moving to Queen Anne's County in 2004. In Queen Anne's County, she has been a teacher specialist and an, and an assistant principal before becoming principal. Education is her passion, and she loves to see children of all ages excited to learn. Building a positive rapport between school, children, and families is imperative for creating a healthy, communicative home-school relationship. She is married to the very fine Reverend Mark Farnell, and they have two adult children, Zachary and Joshua, who we have with us today. Zach. Zachary, okay. When not in school, Mrs. Farnell loves to spend time with her family, be near or on the water, and exercise. Yeah. Congratulations, Mrs. Farnell, on being named the Outstanding Leadership Honoree. And we're just going to take a photo. to meet the finalists. Well, you've met them before, but since we're gonna do it formally tonight, this is the finalist from last year's Teacher of the Year. 
know that I am very proud to have them all as teachers in our school system. And now I have the pleasure of introducing our first finalist from last year, Mr. David Cherry from Mattapique Elementary School. All right, Mr. Cherry and your crew, good to see you. It's good to see you as well. Mr. Cherry graduated from Salisbury University with a BSA in elementary education and later earned an MA in STEM education from UMBC. He's been teaching at Mattapique Elementary throughout his educational career. He served as the school improvement team um, per, uh, member and a fifth grade team leader, as well as on the STEM fair committee. He has written curriculum at the state level for Next Generation Science and accompanied winter and spring concerts on the piano. Mr. Cherry loves working with children and making a positive difference in their lives. He understands that students are constantly developing, not only in the process of their subject matter, but personally and spiritually. Students have to feel comfortable to be successful. And his goal is to make learning fun and meaningful. He feels that the most important aspect of teaching is to create a safe and nurturing environment. He also feels that education goes beyond the school's walls. He has taken his love for STEM to the community in the form of outreach for Boy Scouts and 4-H. He's also written a curriculum for the YMCA summer camps in Easton. And I would also like to add that Mr. Cherry served on my um, teacher advisory council, staff yeah. advisory council. So thank you for all that you've done. Mr. Cherry, your family thanks you, your school team, and all of us thank you for all of your guidance, your support, and your love. Congratulations, Mr. Cherry. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sure. thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I didn't recognize you under that mask. <laughs> thank you. See you. Okay. Last year's second teacher of the year finalist is Miss Erin Connolly, a U.S. history teacher at Mattapique Middle School. Oh, great to see you, Ms. Connolly. A graduate of Kent Island High School, she received her bachelor's degree in history and secondary education from Salisbury University. A member of the SU Dance Company for four years, she won most outstanding contribution for her work as a choreographer. Also at SU, she presented at the National Professional Development Schools, local, state, and national conferences on the topics of co-teaching and positive reinforcement. Some of her other activities at Mattapique Middle School include eighth grade team leader, student government advisor, faculty advisory chair, and PBIS committee member, as well as, if she has any more time, <laughs> head coach for the Ken Island High School varsity dance team. She thanks her husband, her family, the administration, and her coworkers for their constant support and encouragement, as well as her students. Without them, she would not have been a Teacher of the Year finalist. And new mom? Yes. Yes, and new mom. <laughs> congratulations, Ms. An excellent dancer. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Your mom showed me pictures this morning. <laughs> okay, now it's time to introduce our third Teacher of the Year finalist, Jill Gill, a second grade teacher at Centerville Elementary School. Come right forward. How are you? I'm Miss good, how are you? Great. Come on, bring your whole team. Absolutely. <laughs> Mrs. Gill is committed to helping students strive to be the best they can be and to never, ever, ever give up. She received her Bachelor of Arts in Elementary Education with a special education endorsement from the College of Notre Dame in Maryland. She is devoted to helping her students flourish, develop, 
and become successful and confident learners while also building positive, collaborative relationships between the school and home as well as the community. She enjoys volunteering her time by mentoring students, teachers, and new teachers. And when not in the classroom, Mrs. Gill enjoys spending time with her family, her husband Brian, and two daughters, Haley and Melanie. She supports her daughters being involved in their sports uh, as a sports parent mom, if you want to put it that way, through all of their organizations. So let's hear it for our Teacher of the Year finalist, Mrs. Gill. <laughs> Where do you want me? There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> finalist is Mrs. Betty Reed. Mrs. Reed is a third grade teacher at Kennard Elementary School. Come on in, Ms. Reed. Step right forward. A Queen Anne's County native, she has been teaching third grade at Kennard for 17 years. She graduated from Queen Anne's County High School, received her bachelor's degree from Washington College, and a master's degree from Walden University in elementary reading and literacy. She lives right here in Chestertown with her husband, Mark, and their three children, Cooper, Ella, and Connor. The beach is her favorite place to visit, and she loves to read in her spare time when she's not on the sidelines at a soccer or lacrosse game. Congratulations to you, Mrs. Reed. Well done. finalist for Teacher of the Year <laughs> is from Kent Island High School, and that is Miss Amber Wright, dance teacher, who could not be here with us tonight. But Miss Wright, as you know, is our was our Teacher of the Year. She uh, received her bachelor's degree in communication arts from Salisbury State University, later following her passion for teaching to become a certified teacher in Maryland. While at SSU, she choreographed and danced for their dance company. She started teaching at Graysonville Elementary, then became certification specialist for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. But she returned to the classroom to teach dance in Prince George's County and then at Kent Island High School. Mrs. Wright thanks, or Ms. Wright thanks her student, Abby Scabs, Skaggs, for her heartfelt nomination. She's also grateful to her administration team for their support, the Kent Island High School staff, and other colleagues from around the county and the state who have offered encouragement. She thanks her parents, Mr. and Reverend George and Bernadette Wright for sharing the words that carry her onward and for Andrew, her son, who is her co-pilot, as well as all the other students and all of the folks at Ken Island High School. To her students, she owes many thanks because without them, she would have been considered, she wouldn't have been considered for this prestigious award. So ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Wright was the fifth finalist for Teacher of the Year. And of course, 2019-2020, Teacher of the Year was Ms. Amber Wright, dance teacher from Kent Island High School. And again, we would like to congratulate all of the 2019-2020 Employees of the Year and Teacher of the Year finalists. 
Before we sit down, we do have uh, a few other special recognitions. And this first special recognition is for Miss Barbara Wallace, the school bus driver for Suttlersville Elementary School and Suttlersville Middle School. All right, come forward, Miss Wallace. Come right here, Miss Wallace. You can step forward. Congratulations. Now, this special recognition is, has been submitted by a parent, Miss Jen Clark, and she said it was okay. I'm sure you know her, that we use her name. And these are her words. <clears throat> she says, I am not sure if there are ever special awards or recognitions for bus drivers, but I wanted to share with you how Miss Wright went above and beyond her job and truly showed the level of care and commitment to children that all parents wish for their kids. It really isn't a surprise after all the amazing teachers and staff my kids and I have experienced with Suttlersville Elementary and Middle Schools. Sometimes <clears throat> the difficult job of the bus drivers have, seems to get overlooked. Ms. Wallace showed such amazing care and dedication on this day previously um, that uh, she was, it was unbelievable to her. As with a lot of us in the Suttlersville area, we live on a farm with a lane that goes back into the farm and a long driveway to our home. When my children were dropped off by Miss Wallace, they crossed the street and headed into the lane or the driveway where I watched from the front porch but could not be seen from the road. There were a few cars behind Miss Wallace, and you tell us if you remember this. The car directly behind her belonged to the grandparents of which Miss Wallace did not know it was them, who turned onto the lane after the bus had let the kids off and was pulling away. Miss Wallace was so vigilant that she noticed a car pulling behind the kids and start talking to them as she was leaving. She called the school immediately, who called me, to make sure that everything was okay and that my kids were okay. In today's world, I can't express how thankful I am for the extra effort by Ms. Wallace and the SES staff. Ms. Wallace had done her job and returned my kids safely and was extraordinary in not only noticing something could be wrong after she dropped them off, but calling the school to report it and make sure they got in touch with me, which they did immediately, and they, she commends them for that. A lot of times this smaller area of Queen Anne's County gets overlooked, but the team representing Queen Anne's County Public Schools up here is amazing and you all need to be aware. I truly hope there is something that a school board can do to recognize the incredible commitment to safety that Ms. Wallace portrayed, but also the incredible way she represented the Queen Anne's County Public School system and the values we as parents appreciate more than words can express. Congratulations so to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Let's take a, a photo. Thank you. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. And finally, we have two more special recognitions, and these are Green Schools Recertification Awards for Graysonville Elementary and Kennard Elementary School. Excellent. We got the whole crew. Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations, Graysonville Elementary and Kennard Elementary School for recertifying as Maryland Green Schools. Graysonville Elementary has been a green school since 2014 and Kennard since 2007. Their recertification has furthered our commitment to maintaining 100% of our schools as green schools for the second year in a row. Queen Anne's County Public Schools is currently the, the only, let me say that one more time, <laughs> the only county with all public schools having this recognition. Out. 
outstanding. The Maryland Green School Award represents a school-wide commitment to environmental literacy that includes staff, students, and the community. Their efforts make a difference today as well as for the future. We recognize the green efforts your schools have worked to achieve, and we commend this significant accomplishment. Congratulations, Graysonville and Kennard. Well done. Thank you. Moving on now, we have our board and staff involvement, uh, board members. Uh, Tammy, you want to start? I do, thank you. Good evening. I'd like to recognize the staff at both high schools for organizing the graduations today. This seemed flawless and seamless. Um, from the ad administrators, secretaries, teachers, guidance counselors, custodians, everyone, um, truly thankful uh, for these wonderful events today. To the class of 2021, congratulations. And again, may God bless you all and keep you safe. Congratulations today. It was a wonderful day. Um, over the past month, I've uh, witnessed the performances that were sent to us by dance performers and various bands through the middle school and high school level. Um, after our meeting last week, I did pop into Queen Anne's County High School to sit through the recognition and awards night. Um, very nice. Always lots of awards. I think it went into the millions this year. <laughs> um, and of course, Queens County High School graduation day. That it was a beautiful ceremony, and the weather was perfect for it. Uh, I did owe the graduation. It was wonderful today. I went to Ken Island, and it was just so very cool to see those young people, uh, young men and women who are ready to go out and make a difference, just like they've done already in the four years. So it was great to see it. I've also appreciated the performances online. I look forward to seeing them in person next year. Yes. All right. I was honored to uh, attend the graduation at Queen Anne's uh, High School and said uh, congratulations 300 times and I can do it one more time. <laughs> congratulations to uh, all the students who are graduating in class of 2021 and God bless. Yes, I'll reiterate those words. I think the graduation, I was at Queen Anne's myself um, and it was it was very nice. It uh, looked like things are getting back to normal, uh, the way we need things to be. Um, very nice thing. It was 10 o'clock in the morning. It was, it was really pleasant. It was nice change. Nice, nice change. Uh, I've been to a few of them in the evenings and I thought the day went very smoothly. And I think Ken Allen, from what I hear from the other board members, went well. And we've been to a couple other uh, things. I, it amazes me what these students have done this year. Um, kudos to our staff, uh, teachers, and the students and parents that have supported this year of unparalleled uh, things that have happened, but uh, we've gotten through it, and we're looking forward to head. Dr. King? Absolutely. Congratulations, first and foremost, to all of the graduates of the class of 2021. It has been quite the year, and they did it. To all of those who have supported them, their parents, their teachers, the administrators, all the community members, congratulations to all of them, and for all of their support. Thank you. I just like to say uh, it has been my honor to serve as the superintendent for Queen Anne's County for the last four years. I have learned so much. I'm a perpetual learner as well. And I have had the great honor of working with some of the most professional staff that I have encountered in my career. And I'd like to thank each of them for that. It truly has been my honor to serve. Uh, we have done a lot of great things over the past four years. We have improved some structures. We have put some things in place. We have done a lot of work with our students. We've continued our academic standing. 
learning. And it has just been not all fabulous and wonderful, but all learning, right? And, and, and a lot of fabulous and wonderful. A lot of firsts have been accomplished. And I am very, very proud of that. So for that, I would just like to say thank you to all who have supported me professionally and personally. It has been my honor. Beginning on tomorrow, June 3rd, Dr. Patricia Salings will serve as the acting superintendent until June 30th. She will be on her post as her appointed, uh, in her appointed role as superintendent starting July 1. So tonight is my last night, my last duty here as uh, filling out this responsibility as at this board meeting. So until we meet again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And moving on, uh, citizen participation. Uh, Mark, we have, we ask all speakers to. Okay, so we ask all speakers to keep in mind <clears throat> the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. Our first speaker is Rich. You want to give us, give us your name once more and address for the record? Uh, Richard McNeil. Uh, I live out on White Marsh Road and represent the retired school personnel group. Good evening, busy day for you all and graduation and so forth and uh, congratulate everybody who had help in that graduation at both schools. So my understanding that it, they both went very well. So good weather. Uh, and Dr. Kane, I wanna thank you from our group for taking on this challenge four years ago to probably never cross your mind that you'd be in a pandemic uh, halfway through that uh, to make decisions and so forth. And, uh, Good luck to you or whatever your plans are and if you're gonna retire for real, good luck with that. So anyway. part two on the way. <laughs> Um, our group would like to recognize, <coughs> excuse me, uh, three students who got our scholarship uh, for this year. And um, I apologize right up front to the ladies and gentlemen who got these if I mispronounce your name. So uh, from Ken Island High School, uh, we'd like to recognize Katina um, Ensley. Uh, she will be attending Wingate University, majoring in elementary education. Uh, she did go through the teacher academy pathway uh, and was very much interested in that. Uh, she will receive both the academic and the book scholarship for Ken Island High School. So congratulations to Ms. Inslee. From Queen Anne's County High School, we'd like to recognize Taylor Walls. Um, will be uh, attending Salisbury University uh, where she will be majoring in uh, elementary education. Uh, so she will be receiving the academic scholarship from our group. Uh, the third one is Ashlyn Coons from Queen Anne's County High School who will be t attending the University of Valley Forge where she plans on majoring in elementary education. Uh, her dream is to return to Queen Anne's County and teach at El uh, Sellersville Elementary School. Um, and she will be receiving the book scholarship from our organization. So congratulations to those three. Um, like everything else, it's sort of opening up. Uh, our group will be having a celebration this July, uh, July 13th. And uh, it'll be the first time in almost 600 days that we've been able to kind of come together, just like I said, a lot of other things. And what we plan on doing is re uh, honoring retirees from last year, which we did not get an opportunity to do, and retirees from this year, plus our mem regular members. Uh, that'll be held at uh, Centerville Methodist Church, uh, 11.30. So if any of you would like to attend, just have to let us know so we can keep you uh, counted for, for uh, food, okay? 
Um, and lastly, as schools close, we'd like to, from our organization, give a big applause for all those who are in the schools, the teachers, the administrators, nurses, custodians, bus drivers, instructional supervisors, students, food services, and athletics for completing a challenging year for instruction. And uh, uh, my hope and, and dream would be that we don't have to do this again. <laughs> that schools can get off to a good start in the fall, and those students who might need a little boost will get that over the summer. Um, I, I know it's going to be a challenge for a lot of students who don't learn independently on a computer and need that instruction. And um, I've always had a heart for teaching, and but not teaching on a computer. Uh, I'm glad I've wasn't doing that so but thank you for all the teachers and and the staff who, who got through the year and we look forward to uh, your support for our group and us supporting your group uh, as we go forward thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you. Uh, that's the only person i had to sign up is that all we have jackie that's all that I have. okay thank you moving on we go into presentations uh, educational facilities master plan President Smith, members of the board, and Dr. Kane. My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the interim chief operating officer for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I'm here this evening to talk to you about our educational facilities master plan. This is a document that we are required to submit yearly to Maryland Department of Planning per COMAR, and it essentially starts our capital funding request to the state. So as we are finishing up our budget for fiscal year 22, we're already starting to look ahead at our requests for fiscal year 23. So this evening, I just want to familiarize you with this document so that you know what it is. Tomorrow, we're going to send you a link to the Google Drive that is going to give you an outline of the 130-page document, and it's going to give you a little bit of time to review it. So tonight, I just want to talk to you about the role of the Educational Facility Master Plan in our state funding process, talk to you a little bit about the schedule, talk to you about the draft version that you're going to see tomorrow and then let you know that the final approval of this document will request at the June 16th work session so that we can submit it to the state by July 1st. Our educational facility master plan, it's the first part of a two-step process. This, as I mentioned before, is the process that we use to get our capital funding from the state. So the Educational Facilities Master Plan, it's a long range plan. We project out a number of years to see what our facility needs are gonna be. We do a yearly update. We look at our enrollment projections and how those are gonna change both in the next few years, but also in 10 years. We're gonna prioritize our facility needs in that document, and then we'll outline the necessary future projects especially the large ones such as renovations, additions, or new buildings. The capital improvement plan is the second part of that funding request, and I'll come back to you in October to discuss what those numbers look like. So that looks at the upcoming fiscal year, but it also projects out future years as well. We establish timelines for when we're gonna request funding for all of our projects. Again, we're looking at the facility needs in that document, and we're looking at what local and state funding matches we're gonna have to request from both the state and the county. Quick slide here just to outline where this is in COMAR. It is a COMAR requirement. It states the date that we have to submit it. So we are doing exactly what the state asks. I 
Yeah, I don't know if I can get some help to maybe reload. We've got a problem with the file. So I'll just talk to you a little bit about what the components are when you see the Educational Facility Master Plan. We have an introduction sheet that tells you what the components are. We look at educational goals, standards, and guidelines. So we look at our school system's mission, the vision, the core values, and the goals. And then we look at system-wide, what our curriculum structure is, and the different methods that we use to instruct students. We have applicable policies that deal with the way we organize schools by grade, by geography. We look at transportation and how that fits into getting all students to the right place. And then districting and redistricting. Thank you. If there's ever a time that we have to look at moving some of the boundaries of the school, this lays it out very clearly as to how we will do that. Enrollment and capacity, again, looks at our projections in the near future, but also within 10 years. And we look at the concurrence with Maryland Department of Planning. We send our numbers to them. They take a look, tell us if it's in line with what they're thinking, and we make sure that there's a match that's at least within 5% so that there's no one going too far off the rails before we catch it. The community analysis is a partnership that we do with Queen Anne's County Planning and Zoning. We look at the demographics of Queen Anne's County. We look at the migration trends, the projections, building permits, sub subdivisions, and we study what's happening within our county. The Kent Island Sewer Project was a big project that we looked at several years ago in the Educational Facility Master Plan because it potentially has an effect on how many students we could see in some of our buildings. The infrastructure is also a big one. We take a look at how Queen Anne's County is suited for more building projects, more families, more students that potentially would be migrating to our county. The facility inventory looks at the size of our buildings. It looks at all of the components of our buildings to make sure that we are meeting the educational programs and then looks at the different districts within Queen Anne's County Public Schools to see if we have equitable um, findings in all of them. And then our facility needs, we look at the utilization of each of the buildings. We see how much space is being utilized. If we are over the state rated capacity, it's usually over 100%. At this point, we have a couple buildings that are close, but not too many that are over. And we look at our future facility needs. Again, if we will need to build new buildings, if we are going to need to do major renovations or updates of some sort. The dates that we look at for the Educational Facility Master Plan, we talk to you in June, we submit in July. The Capital Improvement Plan, we'll talk to you in the September, October timeframe. We'll submit it to the state in October. We don't start talking to the county about their state match for our funding until February, March, or when we start that budget process and the discussions with them. And then capital funding comes available to us on July 1st. Typically, for planning and design on these projects, we're one to two years in advance of actual construction. So we typically are planning buildings and large projects for about two years before we ever break ground. The next steps are pretty easy. We're gonna get this document out to you. We'll just ask you to take some time to review it. We'll discuss it again at the June 16th meeting in detail. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns as you're looking over it, if there's anything that you want us to explain in greater detail, certainly please contact me. We can also have a discussion at the June 16th work session about anything that comes up and we'll ask for your approval at that meeting, but we can also do it with any changes that may come up at that time. Are there any questions this evening? Um, oh, thanks for the information, but just real quick, will the report that's coming out, will it have which schools are close to 100%, yes. which schools are over? Yes, it will show all of the utilization, it'll show the projections, it'll show the state rated capacity for each of the buildings, so you can take a look at each of them in depth. 
this uh, thing, is it pretty much 90%, 100% done now? Yes. Could a couple copies be made and left here for board members to pick it up if they want to look at it with a hard copy? Yes, if you would like a hard copy, I'd be very happy well, to make I, your hard copy. It's 130 copies. pages. If we could just, if the board says it, if we could just have a couple here, a couple of us are in Centerville could look at it. We have another budget meeting next Wednesday. We give other board members a couple week, a week. To, besides look on a computer, could make notes, and I think it would be helpful if we could do that. We certainly would, can do that. Would that be all right with all the board members? Oh, yeah. Sure. I would, yeah. I just think it would be clearer than we, because we have, you have questions, you look on a computer and you write something down and sure. I think it'd be easier just to make clip note or notes on there and just stick them to you. Yep. We'll have the okay. copies available for you starting tomorrow. And just, just a couple or something. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. for a break, but everybody's ready to keep going, aren't they? Sure. Please. Okay, human resource report. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the human resource and resources and bus substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Aye, Bill. Thank you. Okay, our next, um, we have no transfer requests, Jane. We're all straight right now. Okay, contracts for approval, uh, 803, Power School Schoology. They probably can't hear. Okay. We're going to talk about the Schoology contract. Contract. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, members of the school board and executive team. My name is Julie Forbes, Supervisor of Accountability Assessment and Data Management. Hello, my name is Michael Page. I am a curriculum supervisor, and today we are here. Uh, the Department of Curriculum Instruction is seeking the approval of Schoology by PowerSchool, a learning management system, in order to continue to support Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Schoology provides an online learning environment for all schools, in which allows users to create, manage, and share academic content in both the traditional and virtual classroom environment. This contract is uh, for a period of July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022 for the amount of $43,668.52, and this is through the ESSER II grant. And this is the same thing we're using currently with us going back to school in a more normal situation if this still this, this size of purchase necessary so um, a learning management system it was really designed to be used for in-person instruction so we're going to work over the summer um, with the input of our Schoology teacher leaders to talk about that tr transition to in-person instruction but it's really what it was ultimately designed for it's been around for about 10 years just as a system and we've implemented it for one um, so yes and also so it'll be a great asset on any inclement weather days um, to have as that resource to use as well. Not to get ahead of myself, but the budget source here is the ESSER grant, ESSER two grant. Correct. That's what I mm -hmm. I look on the next thing we're having for a uh, Power School Performance Matters assessment. Mm -hmm. that they're, they're, are they two completely different things? Yes. Okay. Yes. But it's by the school G is a part of the Power School Performance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was our cost last year, just roughly? You know, I, I apologize, I don't have it with us. They did give us a discount last year, so I think the first year of implementation per pupil, it was about 50% less, and that's typical of what happens the first year, but we did pay um, a bit for professional development, so roughly we, we, we ended up with a total amount in a similar range, and that was covered by the CARES Act funding last year. I, mean, we, I think we paid our whole staff. Mm -hmm. A, a one day to do that. That's so, correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's part of the training in August. 
And this falls under the ESSER II grant, Ms. Towers? Correct. As far for furthering education? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve these uh, learning management school Schoology system contract period July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Fiscal dollar amount of $43,668.52. Budget source ESSER II grant. Second. A motion and a second. And this will be for one more year. Mm -hmm. Do we anticipate it after that, or is it something that's going to not, I'm not saying go away, but is it something that's got a life expectancy or something? I believe that, um, and, and I will rely on Dr. Kane and Ms. Towers for this, but I do believe that all school systems in Maryland are going to be required to have a learning management system by, is it 2022? Is that that, that that is correct. So a learning management system was something that we needed to have in order to organize the way we do instruction, period. So Queen Anne's County was one of, I think, two school districts in the state that did not have one. Luckily, we were able to acquire this right before, um, you know, it became critical that we have one before the pandemic, so we were able to get it. This was also a recommendation from the um, audit, the curriculum audit that was done some years ago. It just took a bit to get the funding in order to do it. So it is something that will be around for, for two, for more, I forever. Just, okay, okay. Right now it's gonna fall on there as a grant, and at some point we might have to put it in an operating budget. I mean, that's not your problem, but <laughs> that's a Jane, Jane issue. Okay. Sir, are these funds that were already budgeted, or are they coming out of the budget that we're planning to approve in the coming weeks? No, this is as a grant. This is, grant. This is our grant uh, money. Grant money. Oh, okay. Grant. All right. What, did we pick Schoology? Uh, was there a uh, competitive bidding, or was this a sole source for this particular management system? Great question. It was sole source uh, due to the affiliation with PowerSchool, and we presented it um, as sole source last, um, last, I believe it was June. We already had PowerSchool, and they just added Schoology in at the time because we needed virtual learning. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's okay. accurate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did this last June. Thanks. I get the last minute right before yes. <laughs> July 1st. Yeah. Okay, do I have any further discussion? A motion and a second. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Those ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you both. Are they here for the next one too or that's all? Yes. <laughs> And so the second contract that I'm presenting is PowerSchool Performance Matters Assessment Analytics Choice. And so this is our data warehouse that we've been using, um, gosh, for quite a few years. And um, so, so what this does is we use this system to administer our local assessments that, that we give locally throughout the year. And it also is the place where um, teachers, principals, school leaders, district leaders go to look at data, look at, um, and, and look at a lot of different metrics and different points kind of in one place. It's essentially like a data dashboard um, that, that we use quite a bit. Um, schools use it for their improvement plans, ongoing progress monitoring of students. So um, it's our it's our assessment tool that we've used for, for a long time. Um, and the cost of that one is $74,451.03. Um, and that does come out of the operating budget, which is where it's continued to come from in the past. I guess same questions. Was this also a sole source or? You know, I it was adopted before my time, um, so I don't know the answer to that. It has been in our district for quite some time. Um, originally, it was uh, called Unify, and then PowerSchool acquired it, but we already um, had it at that time, so I apologize. I don't know what the process was back when this was adopted. Okay. Yeah. So annually, we're paying about 75000 mm -hmm. so as a... You said it's for um, assessments. Did we use any? Did we do assessments this past year? So this year, due to this, due to the pandemic, um, we did not use it as we typically do, which was similar to other school systems. So typically, what we do, we use it to administer um, our English assessments, math, social studies, science, and so those are all built in the system, um, and, and we use it on an annual basis. We have continued to use it for a lot of data analysis, and teachers use it quite a bit. Um, teachers use it as part of the teacher evaluation process, 
progress when they set their student learning objectives and they look at those data measures and, and those assessments are often part of that. So we did not give as many assessments this past year due to the circumstance, but we anticipate we will be back to where we were in the fall, so. Mm -hmm. Ms. Towers, what was it budgeted for in 2021? Do you have that? I apologize, I didn't look it up before I got here. I have is could we also use the ESSER funds for this? Or since that would, it was that would be my question because we have a budget hearing, uh, not budget, budget meeting next week, and I know we're looking at different ways to fund Correct. things. Mm -hmm. And this might be an idea we could put into ESSER rather than and our regular budget. Uh, yeah, that's a question I had. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. One. But since it's an ongoing well, if platform it, that we've used, uh, can it be put into the ESSER funds? Well, if we qualify for that, there would be a place to put it and would relieve us some other money. Yes. We could tie it to learning loss. Especially with the assessments. And, and if, yes. if this can't Especially be answered right now, can we, can we make this decision next meeting too? That's That, that would be my other question. If, I mean, we're asking you a lot of questions real quick. For, so. Is that a problem, Ms. Forbes, if we, if we add it until the June 16th meeting since it's not until August 1st? I, I don't believe so. Um, I don't think uh, that should be an issue. Um, we are- Of the essence. No, no, it's, you know, the contract starts August 1st, so- Could we could we put this item on next week's agenda? Would that be a problem? How about the 16th, since next week is going to be- Okay, put it on the 16th, be all right. Sure. And then- Yeah, absolutely. So I make a motion to table the vote on power school performance matters to the June 16th work session. Second. That's right, you note that. Get to do a vote. You have a motion and a second, sir. We just need a motion vote. Motion and second, any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for I mean, that, mm -hmm. well, so no. Yeah, absolutely. And the third contract I have for you this evening is our contract with the College Board. And so this contract pays for us to offer, we offer the PSAT and MSQT, um, which is the National Merit uh, Scholarship Qualifying Test uh, for all of our students in 10th grade. And we also offer the SAT school day for our students in 11th grade. And this is no charge for our students. Um, they, this, that's correct, our students this, do not. This covers the cost mm -hmm. of their, Yeah. And I think we've done that over the past few years too. I've yes, heard. absolutely. Yep, it's been something we've been offering um, for some time and we we're still able to offer this year as well. So we were able to continue that. And this number, I guess, reflects how many students take advantage of this? Yes, yeah, and and it, it can fluctuate. So this is what we um, the, the contract is for, but if for some reason our numbers were to go down, we don't pay for those assessments. We pay for the ones that, that, that are administered. Can this be tied to learning loss? No. No, okay. Roughly what's it cost for each test? You know, they differ. Um, I know the SAT is more. Um, and, and something also to note is the SAT also um, is a piece of our accountability system. So we are required by accountability, um, state accountability, to test all students in high school in English language arts and mathematics. So our students who take Algebra 1 in eighth grade also need an assessment in, while they're in high school. So it's kind of nice okay. that um, it assists so with this that. Covers, this covers a lot of students. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's during the school day, which is great. So then, um, and the high schools do a great job of, you know, ensuring participation and, and students are able to participate in that. Okay. Um, let's 
see. So I think PSAT fluctuates from about, I mean, yeah, PSAT is about 12 to 14, so that's the lesser one. And the SAT is a little bit more. Um, and that ranges between, um, I believe it's 30 and 36 per student. And I had a question about that, because it seems, as a, is it tied into our national school lunch program is based on the price? Um, yeah, so we do receive um, waivers. So we do, um, students who qualify for free and reduced meals, um, we are able, for those who consent um, for us to share the information with the College Board, we're able to apply for waivers. So we do that every year as well, and we submit those numbers to the College Board. So sometimes that'll bring the cost down even further but we're paying a certain amount or doesn't matter if we're getting a waiver or still this contract is for a certain amount that's correct yeah and and also like um, if, if for some reason in one year we had more students who qualified for free and reduced meals we'd actually see this number go down um, because they do cover a, a part of that students um, sign up so it can fluctuate a little bit but this I'm is just curious it did say that we're, we're charged whether or not the students actually take the test this is I guess is a practice or it's a the PSAT is the practice right so yeah. do you know what the ratio is taking the college board versus taking the PSAT oh um, so the our 10th graders take the PSAT and we have really high participation um, I this year was different and I could certainly go back and um, get the actual numbers for you because I don't want to know so I'm just but I know the high schools do an excellent job of encouraging each and every student and again it's during a regular school day and for the SAT again it counts for an accountability piece um, so they just about the majority of our students take it unless there's an unusual circumstance. So it's, and it's also just a great opportunity to provide to all students that again, it's during the school day, we have transportation. Again, it's, it's accessible to everyone um, and, and the cost is covered. So I think it's, it's wonderful that we offer this. Other comments? Did we have budgeted uh, Ms. Towers in this, in this line item? Uh, on the last one for perform, performance matters was 74,000. And under the college, we had budgeted last year at 25,000. Hmm. So it's jumped from 25 to 32,000 for this year. I believe it had to do with um, the pandemic. There was, last year was kind of an unusual year. We had paid the contract and I believe it had to do with offering the SAT. Typically we offer the SAT to juniors in the spring, but because of the school closure in March of um, the prior year, we weren't able to. So we actually offered the SAT to seniors in September. So I think that, that we had paid the prior year and I believe um, it may have covered that. It was, it was pretty unusual. So this year we did SAT from the prior year and then a smaller PSAT and a smaller SAT administration because this year students um, were highly encouraged to come in um, but we didn't have as high of the rates that we normally do participating because it wasn't it typically the school day is really what um, increases our participation so oh okay thank you okay any other further questions so Mr. Smith, may I offer a motion to renew the ongoing contract with College Board for the school year uh, July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $32,641. Budget source, the FY 2022 operating budget. I have a second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Kane, members of the board. 
for the record, my name is Adam Tolley, Supervisor of Social Studies and CTE. And I'm here tonight to seek approval to purchase two high school textbook series. Uh, first one, World History Interactive, um, for total amount of $38,439.29 from the FY uh, Capital Textbook budget. And then the second is AP, uh, World History, World Civilizations, Global Experience, for a total of $29,986.69. And this, the AP contract is for six years, and the regular World History is a contract for eight years. Um, and just checking before I came down, there have been no um, comments on the website uh, with regard to the textbooks. When I see six and eight years, the figure I'm seeing is for one year. This is this is a total for the, for all 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 so years. So the twenty on the first one, the twenty nine nine eighty six. Yes. Is, is I can divide it by six. So basically, the cost is a little about five thousand. About five thousand dollars per year. Correct. And then, and that's the AP. The AP does not offer the, they don't offer the eight year option. Um, and if you remember when we did the, the public read, we had changed it up right before because they had thrown out that eight year option, which really is is a great value for eight years. And again, that they, um, that's a 2022 copyright on that textbook. So even after eight years, it's, you know, it's still gonna be um, fairly current. I mean, these are, I mean, standard books for these type of classes. I mean, it's just something has to, and not has to, but something comes in as a. Absolutely, and it, and it is. So we have the we have the physical textbooks that'll be in the classroom, a class set for for everybody. AP uh, a little bit different, just for the reading. So we have a, a textbook for the students to take home as well. Even though there there is a digital option, so the students can download the. So if they have internet issues, they can actually download. If they come to school, download the textbook as a PDF and then access it at home or or wherever they are. A, a, a hardback book. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's a life expectancy? One of those things for students. Well, it, I mean, you actually get you know six years out. We we do, and, and I think it's you know at least in in my area we've kind of shifted away from you know the because of you know our one to one initiative and being able to to access it you know via um, the internet and then be able to download the textbook. Keeping the classroom sets has has increased the life expectancy on those books, so they're not being taken home and thrown around on the bus and in the locker room and on the soccer field and and that type of thing. So. We've, we've made up pretty well. And again, that is, you know, with the one-to-one -one initiative and students being able to have access to the computer and, and um, accessing it whenever whenever they need to, it's, it's definitely helped out. And it, and it cuts down on costs as well, not having to order a textbook for, for every single student. But, but the textbook is available if the student wants it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's, we purchased, there's 320 um, to be split between the schools for that one that one grade level, which is more than enough, because one, one classroom teacher could teach three sections of world history, for example, and they would only need 30 textbooks as a class set. So there's, there is enough, and if there is a student who needs to, to take the book home for whatever reason, um, then they can, they can sign the book Got out that. and take it home, absolutely. Any other questions by this board? Mr. Smith, may I offer a motion to approve the purchase of the new textbooks and digital licenses for World History Interactive High School Modern Era fiscal dollar uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of thirty eight thousand four hundred thirty nine dollars twenty nine cents budget source FY twenty one capital textbook budget. I have a motion. Uh, second. 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 Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Say aye. aye. Mr. Smith, may I offer a motion to purchase the new textbooks and digital licenses for World Civilization, World Civilizations, the Global Experience, AP edition. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $29,986.69. Budget source, the FY21 capital textbook budget. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. 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 thank you. Thank you, Mr. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you all very much for your support. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Dr. King. <laughs> Capital project, an interior painting, a Matic Elementary. 
Good evening once again, board members and Dr. Kane. I'm here this evening to request your approval of a contract with Page Industrial Services to paint the interior of the building at Mattapique Elementary School. This is a contract utilizing cooperative purchasing with Gordian Sourcewell. We will be repainting all of the interior spaces of the building. This includes our walls, our ceilings, door frames, and any previously painted doors. We'll be completing the work this summer, so June 15th to August 15th to get ready for the students to come back. The fiscal dollar amount is $147,198.17. We are trying to budget at least one school repainting project per year so that we are on a regular schedule and this was budgeted as a part of fiscal year 2021 in the comprehensive building assessment line item. How often do we repaint an interior of a school? How often does it need to be done? There are a number of schools who have not been repainted <clears throat> since they were built. So within the last five years, we have tried to get on a schedule where we, we are repainting every seven to 10 years because that's typically the life expectancy of paint, especially in buildings where we have drywall surfaces. They need to be done a lot faster. Our elementary schools right now are the ones that are the most needy. We've utilized the same contract to do Sudlersville Elementary School, Graysonville Elementary School, and Churchill Elementary School over the last three years, and we've had great success with those. So Mattapique will be one of our next. Uh, after elementaries are finished, then we move on to our middle schools. We do have several newer middle schools that are not in need of that yet, and then on to our high schools. Have we ever had to do lead remediation on any of our... No, at this point, we don't have oh, active lead in any of the buildings. All of our buildings have had comprehensive renovations, and we've taken care of that during that process. Thanks. Last one was Stevensville Middle School. Yes, that's right. And was this a sole source? It's not sole source. It's cooperative purchasing. So it is an already bid contract. We have gotten two other competitive prices just to see where this falls. Manapeak Elementary School was opened in 2003? 2004 was the official Four. date. Yep. It has and been, has been not painted, been painted since. since then. Yes. And you've worked with these, this person or this group before, so you feel confident they can meet their obligations yes. as far as getting them in the, by the opening of school year? Yes, they've been able to do it with the other three schools. And that school's not being utilized with. during the summer? No. For anything, so. No, we may have some parks and rec activity happening there, but nothing that will preclude us from working when, within the when, building when this summer. That won't inhere their ability to finish. I mean, we would have to yeah. do something with parks and rec if I'm paying you some priority if we have a contractor in there. That's correct. We, we definitely make sure it's the priority, and we have actually worked around summer school and other programs with this contractor and they're very flexible. That's one of the reasons that um, this contract has worked so well for us. Okay, I have the contract in front of us. Any, do I have a motion? Mr. Smith, may I offer a motion to approve the contract with Page Industrial Services to paint uh, Mattapique Elementary School, fiscal impact dollar amount of $147,198.17, budget source FY 2021 comprehensive building assessment. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it, 5 -0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Puller. In front of us, we've talked about our next year's schedule. Um, to start it off with our next, well, we have meetings in June, but this is for the 21-22 school board schedule. July the 7th would be our regular school board meeting. I am going to suggest that we scratch July the 8th. We will have July the 14th. July 21st as two work sessions in July since we do have a few things we have to address. Um, any other comments that any other board members would? And of course, as we go through the year, something could change, but as uh, we know, our first meeting is the first Wednesday of every month and the third Wednesday is our work session, which is fine. Anybody else have any? Can I make a, uh, a suggestion? Uh, hmm? Then October 27th and November 10th, could we get rid of those two dates? Okay. The, the October, October 6th. October 27th. Right. And November 10th. I don't know why that November 10th is in there. It's not the first or the third week. Does anybody know a reason why Jackie's or just, is that from last year or something? Ms. Wright, I'm last sorry. Last year and sometime Maid has um, their conferences around those times. 
we need to schedule a session for that? No, we don't, but I'm just, I didn't okay. want to. I have no problem. Drop, you want to drop the 27th, October 27th, and November 9th, and it could always be added if necessary. November 10th. No, October 27th and November 10th. Please. Any other suggestions? Okay, uh, we have in front of it those corrections. Uh, I've marked them up. Uh, so do we need to approve this? Mm. Motion to approve or just? Make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 school board meeting schedule as amended. Second. First and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Information items, no. Expenditure report. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, board members. Tonight we bring before you the monthly expenditure report for month ending May. As you can see, our spending to date, we're at 91% as of the end of May. Total outstanding encumbrances is a low of 14.1 million. Total expenses is 75,797,646. Any question? We're having a budget meeting next Wednesday. Yes. You'll have some pretty close numbers and where we are for finals, I hope, I would think by then, or? Right, uh, last week what we gave you was very conservative amounts. We've had cutoff dates as far as uh, there's, spending. There's been no major, since that report, there's been no. Uh, I can take a look at it and okay. provide updates. Just numbers. so we have it for next the next meeting, yes. if there's any changes or any drastic changes. Okay, board have any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. No transfer notices. Oh, here we are again. Let's pull them. So in a typical year, we would be here with you to discuss our meal price proposal for the upcoming school year. This is just an informational item for you this evening. And what we would typically do is to give you an overview of how those prices are determined and then to let you know what we are proposing as those uh, breakfast and lunch prices. This year, the National School Lunch Program um, has extended their waivers through the USDA. So normally we would look at a formula based on what the USDA gives us to determine what those breakfast and lunch prices should be. At this time, because of the pandemic, those formulas have not even come out to us yet. So for the 2021 and 2022 school year, the breakfast and lunch will be free for all students. Those waivers have been extended through June 30th of 2022. So it'll be free lunch for everybody? It will be free breakfast and lunch for everyone for the entire next school year. And the federal government's reimbursed us for this? That's correct. And we've been reimbursed for all the other meals on wheels and everything else we've done? Yes. So everything's all their obligations are met to us. Yes, so we do have some current ones that are within the current month, but there's nothing that's in arrears at this point. What I can tell you is that for our meal prices, for any that would be a second meal, so we do have some students who choose to purchase either a second breakfast or a second lunch, we will not be increasing our rates for those second meals. So the 2021-2022 meal prices, as you'll see them listed here, are the same as they are this year and they would only apply to a second meal for those students. So breakfast at 150, elementary lunch at 250, middle and high lunch at 275. We have breakfast and lunch available to our staff and to the adults. Breakfast at 250, lunch at 450, and an additional milk, 50 cents. But the first meal will be covered by the waiver and free to all students. So we just wanted to bring that to you and let the public know that that's what we anticipate for next school year. Is that, even if we have it in school, I mean, if we're having breakfast and lunch in the schools? Yes. 
So how is the Sodexo taken care of? How is what? How is Sodexo taken care of? So we have a guarantee that Correct. there's a reimbursement for each of the meals. So that allows us to pay Sodexo Through the, government. the guarantee. Yes. Okay. So they'll be able to get there. We'll be able to honor our contract we'll be with able Sodexo. To. Yes. And we did concur with Sodexo about meal prices. If the waivers were not extended, it was not their recommendation at this time that we do any type of increase, even if we were outside of the waivers, because we do have some fund balance in the Sodexo accounts from previous years, and we didn't feel this would be the time to raise prices anyway. So we're able to continue with the ones that we have. That's great. When, when the government, are this government paying us dollars or are they sending us food? It's actually reimbursement through dollars. Reimbursement. We're purchasing yes. the food. Yes, Sodexo. Yes. And all or our, Sodexo. I, I, I got one little piece of information that might not be correct. It, it's all, it's not expired or anything. I mean, I know it's a while, a bottle, a, a quart, quart of milk might be expired because something went wrong. No, no, no. But overall, are, it's. There are very stringent safety measures that Sodexo and any food service okay. has to follow. And so. But that's not it's, happening. It's, no. It's very closely followed. Any other questions? But, but our contract section, with their, the numbers are working there, even though we're giving yes. free and reduced, or not free, we're giving free lunches, they're still solvent as far as what they're doing. Yes. And it, it has been the same for this year as well. Right. Well, I, this year concern me, but next year is going to concern me even more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, I'm Vanessa Bass, Human Resources Director, and I bring before you HR policies. Policy 404 and 401.1, those are your educators, that's your principals, assistant principals, curriculum instruction, teachers. This is our licensure. It has to be monitored with MSDE, and we monitor it in HR. This is an update for you. This is information first read only. And we had to update it based on new laws. It had not been updated for quite a while. And we are changing to, and it'll be a lot of things that I would have to explain to you one-on-one. -on -one. We used to take something called the National Teacher's Exam. I was covered under that. Then they went to practice exams for um, much like your SATs. If you scored well on your SATs, you didn't have to take your practice one. The score above 1,200 would let you come on in and then you would just have to take your subject exam special ed art or whatever the practice exam educational testing services told us we had to keep to keep our licensures other than that it would be after you get your um, BA, you can take coursework. You wouldn't have to take, not unless you wanted a new endorsement. Every time you get a new endorsement on your license, you would have to do something for that endorsement. So when I get the questions, are the people highly capable? Yes, they are, because it's based on MSCE. And this is replacing the BOE resolution number 8093, which was written in 1993. Mm -hmm. One of the ones yes, we had Mrs. discussed Scarfer. at yes. length. So, it goes on and let's tell you what we do, what our responsibility is, and what the teacher, educator, slash principals, assistant principals have to do to keep their licensure. And it's also noted on our license. So do you want to do these all at once, Mr. Smith, or one at a time, or? I think you, I have no problem grouping them all. Just grouping it all at one read, time? Read them, the, read the policy number, because it's the first read. So, you want to do the personnel records as well, and Title IX and the 
policy for student oh, Matt, nutrition. Matt, does do anybody have any questions? Matt's in the back to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions on this right now? Well, I do have a question on the Title, title IX. That's not true. Okay. okay. That's right. Matt will be up. Okay. I share with him, but Matt will be presenting that. Okay. Okay. Al, I mean, do you think the best way you want to do them all at once or you do them separately or how do you? Well, I think if there are questions about individual ones, you okay, certainly can mm -hmm, if you separate them. You, you don't need to approve anything, so That's this right. is the time to ask questions. First read. Mm -hmm. This is for first read. Yes. Yes. That's okay, it. so does anybody have any questions for Ms. Bass right now? Thank you. Okay, sorry. Have, and you have a, another one? I have one more. Okay, 423. Okay. Is it, <laughs> 423. It is personnel records. It is a brand new policy. We did not have a policy to speak on what we need to do, what should be in files, what cannot be in files, what people can look at, as well as myself, um, how to do it. So I, I get a little nervous when we do not have policies and regulations for that. So that will be brand spanking new. Um, I was the one that was a little nervous about it. So it had no resolution. It has nothing to review. So it will be first read and also a new policy. Thank you, Ms. Bates. Thank you. First chair, second chair. <laughs> Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, members of the board. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. I'm here with an updated uh, Title IX Policy 528, Title IX Regulation 528.1. Um, in short, the U.S. Department of Education published new regulations regarding sexual harassment under Title IX of the Education Amendments, uh, and these went into effect in August of 2020. So what you have before you in the policy and the regulation are those updates. So everything in red is basically what's updated. Correct. Anybody have any questions on this right now? Well, I just had a question on page two. Just, it was interesting in the next to last paragraph it says where it says, although there is no time limit per se to filing a formal complaint. So I noticed that part of, uh, like you could complain that somebody made an inappropriate joke right that could be a complaint so they could in theory have heard a joke and been offended as a freshman and then they could present it and make another uh, make a complaint when they're a senior where exactly is it um it's on page two and it mm -hmm. says although there is no time limit per se to filing a formal complaint for complaints initiated by the complainant or his or her parent or guardian the complainant must be employed by the district or participating in so it's it's the um it's the last paragraph, full paragraph, because in the rest is A, B, C, and D in, in parentheses. On the it's in the regulation. Regulation, I regulation yeah. yes. Sorry. So that is correct. And again, this was, um, these, and, and the regulation is almost completely uh, revised just to the new um, U.S. Department of Education updates in the regulation and the law. Um, so it's it's that's exactly what's reflected in the in the regulation. Um, so it says although there's no time limit per se. So ultimately, a student and, and you give the example of a of a comment. I know, but there could be something more serious. Well, no, I understand that, but I'm just saying in theory, if someone heard a joke as a freshman that they were offended by, they could bring a complaint, a formal complaint, as a senior. That is correct. And just by filing a formal complaint, that does not mean that there will be a oh, formal right. investigation right. completed. So. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Page.
Good evening again. My name is Michael Page. I'm a curriculum supervisor and I'm here to present to you the policy uh, 640 and the regulation 640.1, which is the student nutrition, health and wellness policy. And uh, these are updates uh, to some uh, an audit that we had. So the, the information that you see in here uh, was requested by MSDE that we have two items within our policy. That is that we clearly articulate that there is a triannual assessment that is performed on our wellness policy and that is required by the Health Hunger Free Act of 2010 and they also requested that we have specifics within our policy about community interaction within the policy. Um, also, what we have before you is the regulation uh, 640.1, and 640.1 is an update to a lot of the food services uh, in, uh, that we uh, provide to our students. So free and reduced lunches, um, our nutrition standards, and so on. So there has been a lot of updates that have come from uh, multiple departments, food services, um, curriculum and instruction, student services, and human resources. So this is a overall policy and regulations that is kind of the wellness of our entire community in regards to our staff, our students, and our community members. And this, these are the kind of the guidelines that we follow in regards to that. Any questions by the board? I was curious, I know I can look it up. If you have a quick link though, would you mind sending me that well, that um, information that this policy is based on? You were saying the well, um, what was it based on? So there's, there's several things that it's based on and I can, I can absolutely send it to you, yes. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I was curious, it did say that they wanted you to get all students to get 60 minutes of activity in a day. Do they still do? PE, I thought we ended, is, a, is there PE throughout the entire 12? So there's two things within here and they kind of are separated. So there's physical education and then there's physical activity. Okay. Um, and uh, would you like clarification on those time frames? Is that weird? No, I think that if, you know, if I, if you could just, lead, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could just lead me to where we're pulling the information from. That would be Mr. Page. Okay, yes. If I may, Ms. Bennett, if you look on the policy itself under specific references and titles, the very, very last, uh, number six, it gives you where the Comar references are, the Maryland Wellness Policies, Practices, Center for Disease Control, Journal of Health, School Health, and Code of Federal Regulation, Title Seven. It, it okay. lists them all there. Okay. And I, th I th don't we have this it, it, when it's a policy? Don't we have links to those on the website? So you're asking me if these are specifically linked? Uh, I don't. Yeah, I, they're in the. I do not think they are, but, oh, okay. I, but I can do that if that's the if that's normal. Uh, no, I'm just. It, but I can absolutely send to you. Yeah, thanks. No, it's just an area of interest for me, and I find it fascinating that we seem so into everybody's life about this nutrition and wellness, and I just want to see where it comes from. Absolutely. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Okay, but this is pretty much a brand new regulation then. So this, so this actually comes from policy 701, which is also listed as wellness okay. uh, within there. And that was one of the conversations that the um, policy committee had uh, two weeks ago um, in regards to how to handle this policy. And what essentially we're doing is we're taking 700, 701 and 640 and, and moving them together. Uh, essentially, they say the same thing, but 701 was so outdated uh, from 2011 that we decided to scrap the regulations and redo them. And that's where you see them reflected in 640.1. Six oh, six Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Thank you. Okay, moving on, future school board meetings. Our next meeting will be next Wednesday for a budget work session. And we also have one scheduled for the 16th, another budget work session. And I think we adopted a 21-22 draft board meeting, which will be out for next year. There's no public comment. Uh, mo motion to move into executive closed session. 
pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the board to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Second. Uh, uh, motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. This concludes our regular board meeting tonight of uh, June the 2nd. Thank you.